There is no better premise to deceive someone that human free will exists than to make their personal salvation of soul and forgiveness for wrongdoing absolutely dependent on an idealized act of self-will and the emotional manipulation that goes along with it. Once a person is deceived, they can empower their own salvation of soul. They are deceived they have personal free will. In addition, that deception has the effect of dehumanizing all those who, by the definition of their condition, cannot do the intellectual or emotional gymnastics to arrive at a choice within the overall deception of free will. Those specific conditions in which a human being cannot supposedly exist because they cannot do those idealized gymnastics and thus are excluded from life by the lie of human choice-based salvation are in the womb, the gravely ill, and the retarded. The actual word of God raises the dead. It goes wherever he sends himself as Holy Spirit. There is no such intellectual or emotional barriers as Lucifer claims that will thwart the gospel or the word of God. But because the free will is idealized to be a gift of God as supposed grace, yet a forced grace on all human beings, the default definition of a human being in that lie then becomes one who has free will and proves it. Those in the womb, the gravely ill, and the retarded are then automatically dehumanized, or more specifically, life unworthy of lifeized, as the Nazi said, and made to appear to be non-living, even if they are what those in the lie of free will call technically alive or biologically alive. But that's when they start calling them brain dead. They don't fit in the ideology of free will and that is a purposeful exclusion that keeps growing by the day. It starts out with those who obviously can't make decisions, then it grows to those who can't make the right decision. Rather than make men moral or responsible, as is the constant lie of those inside human speech, the lie of free will plainly makes them lack compassion by the very definition of the lie itself and its use among those in the whole population of those deceived by it. Those inside the lie of free will appear stupid and ignorant in their own eyes to have compassion on those who cannot be defined as human because they cannot prove they can choose anything at any time or always make wrong choices as regards ever-shifting societal norms such as to earn the title retarded or handicapped in addition to being unable to return the supposed free will effort expended on their behalf. That's why you never see free will based religionists preaching to the comatose, the womb, or the retarded, even though they will, often enough, throw human speech at God as supposed prayer asking for God to heal that person in such a way as to explicitly do behaviors that are recognized by those in the lie of free will as free will behaviors as idealized healing and as the very definition of healing. Free will based religionists will also use those persons in those conditions as props to loudly throw human speech at God in the presence of others they wish to ensnare in the lie of free will and call that caring for the sick through a prayer ministry or advocacy. An example can be seen in this public domain film from the 1990s about the effects of drug abuse by the mother on the child in the womb called And Down Will Come Baby. Interesting to note that while they say the effect is across all ethnic and economic boundaries, they never preface that observation with among a total population of people deceived they have free will or all those with drug problems are deceived they have free will they never say the deceptions of the parents are pushed off on the child in exactly the same way the drugs affect the fetus excepting the children of the womb that are born again in christ by the pure grace of god on his elect the addicted baby problem is idealized to exist as a purely physical phenomenon and as unjust expressly on the implied principle that the child doesn't get to choose in deference to the law of human free will and as idealizing the womb as unable to do what is necessary to prove that those in it are human beings. The whole movie is an appeal to the law of human free will that implies nothing spiritual is ongoing in the womb and certainly nothing holy because the only holiness possible for those in that lie, in the eyes of those to see they have free will, is affected by personal choice. If you don't have personal choice, by the definition of their lie, you can't be holy. By the, but the film portrays that only a physical event is ongoing in the womb that can be avoided by the free will actions of somebody other than the child. That by itself is a subtle attempt to deify the parents and give them powers over the child that supposedly God cannot overcome himself by actual new birth in Jesus Christ. So we have a governmental history in the United States support for the law of human free will put forth as an ad campaign for public benefit and advocacy which they taught kids to say in the campaign a subtle deification of parents or an idealized health care system at the same time we find outright hostility toward and incredulity at a minimum at the truth of new birth in Jesus Christ of some of the elect while in the womb of the mother. It seems a lie of human free will through the parents and health advocates thinks they have powers over children that they think are more powerful and more important than what God can perform. That they, avoid, that they avoided complete truth by skipping religious discussion because it was a publicly funded film only demonstrates how and why the enemies of truth supposedly secure one freedom for the will, the idealized freedom in the lie of free will to avoid drugs, 
while using human speech as a supposed freedom to lie by omission that anything holy can go on in the womb. While the premise of a human speech idealized free will gospel is that you are only doing something that affects your soul, but that you must constantly do it and redo, or otherwise supposedly lose your salvation. In other words, you must keep choosing Jesus over and over and in front of the priest to remain in that church, to remain among those groups of people, as proving you have free as proving you have free will to yourself and to the priests and preachers, to prove to them that you are a human being and still definable as a human being by their lives as alive, that lie of free will as a lying spirit in you is multitasking and giving you a false sense of safety, power, emotional, intellectual achievement, and a simultaneous derision of all those who cannot do as the definition of their condition as you have supposedly done. New birth in Jesus Christ in the womb of the mother from scripture. Note that every new birth in the womb directly attributes that new birth to an act of speech by God as word as opposed to human speech. Concerning the Apostle Paul, Galatians 1 verse 15. But when God, who set me apart even from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace, act of speech, called me. Concerning King David, Psalms 139 verses 13 through 16. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou didst cover me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My bones were not hidden from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my unformed substance, and in thy book all my members were written during many days when they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. In thy book all my members were written. They weren't written in human speech. Concerning Samson, Judges chapter 13, verse 7. This is uh, the mother talking to her husband saying what the angel had told her. And he said to me, Behold, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and now drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat nothing unclean. For the boy shall be a Nazarite of God from the womb to the day of his death. She's telling her husband a divine communication that she had received in the word of God. Concerning the elect in general, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24, Thus saith Jehovah thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am Jehovah the maker of all things, who alone stretch out the heavens and who did spread forth the earth by myself. Thus saith Jehovah. The word of God comes and says, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1, Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye peoples, from afar. Jehovah hath called me from the womb, and from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name, as distinguished from human speech. Jeremiah, concerning the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, And the word of Jehovah came unto me, saying, which is an which is a express pattern of speech in which you will find that God says over and over and, and that's actually in the scriptures in the, in the Old Testament alone more than 50 times and the word of Jehovah came unto me the word of Jehovah is personified as coming as arriving to, at the prophet and then speaking when he says the word of Jehovah came unto me he doesn't mean I just had a thought and it was out of the norm and so that means God spoke to me he said the word of Jehovah came unto me and then later on we have in John and the word became flesh John 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so back in the Old Testament he said, and the word of Jehovah came unto me saying before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee and before thou came forth out of the womb I hallowed thee I appointed thee a prophet unto the nations concerning John the Baptist Gospel of Luke chapter 1 verses 41 through 44 and it came to pass as Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and cried out with a loud voice and said blessed art thou amongst women and blessed the fruit of my womb and whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me for behold as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears the babe leaped with joy in my womb now there's no deification of Mary going on here Mary is not a perpetual virgin she was a virgin at the time but she had Christ and then she had other children by Joseph Mary was a born again Christian God spoke through her the instant that uh, Elizabeth heard the voice of God through Mary she was filled with the Holy Spirit and when she spoke uh, and spoke and as was a witness to new birth in the womb of John the Baptist for behold as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears the babe leaped with joy in my womb and concerning Jesus Christ, uh, Gospel of Luke chapter 1, verses 30 and 31. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in the womb, and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Not only delivers the divine revelation, but says what she will say in, in the same word of God later on. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.